welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-40. When we were with our group last time, they had located the trail to Colby and met a retiring merchant on the road. Cabe's negotiating skills garnered the party a large tent from elven artisans at a good price. Karina also managed to pick up a leash for her new pet as well. The party was warned about bandits ahead from the merchant. We rejoin them now several hours into their sojourn into the frontier. Karina stopped and set down the axe beak that had become quite fidgety and the group halted when they noticed her. Cabe displayed a look of displeasure at keeping the creature and mentioned making it a meal which garnered several harsh glances from the group. He and Fargus set the tent down which, while light, had begun to weigh them down. The group each obtained drinks from the water skins and Karina pulled some fluid in her hand and gave it to the axe beak. The creature pecked the water out of her hand and cooed at its mistress who smiled brightly. Some of the group enjoyed the childlike wonderment that the waif displayed, while others felt it was a waste of time. Shaking his head, Cabe Silvertongue exhaled deeply and approached Karina. Kicking at the dust, he began to speak in a firm tone. <clears throat> Look, I know you have taken an interest in this creature and are quite fond of it. We've all seen it in your eyes, and, while I appreciate a good animal companion, I must repeat my concerns over keeping this this man-killer around. Anger began to spread across the wave's face and she gave her retort when Bulger the gnome sailor spoke up. Hey laddie, this creature is small and while some of us small creatures can kill men or elves, I doubt that the girl's pet is a big threat to any of us. Why are you so opposed to keeping it a while? An argument then ensued with Bulger, Lady Arena, and Karina all vying comments as to why keeping the baby axe beak was not an issue, while Sister Elaine and Cabe gave equally valid points on the dangers of the wild animal and its quick trip to adulthood. Fargus kept watch in the dimming light ahead, shaking his head at the argument. Now you listen up, Bard, started Karina as she set the baby bird down on the ground. I have every right to keep this thing. I found it, I'm taking care of it, it's not taking any provisions from the group, and I want to keep it. If you have a problem with this, well, then Peepers and I will say our goodbyes when we reach Colby and wish you the best. Further arguing continued with everyone but Cabe laughing at the name of Peepers. As the arguing got worse, Cabe stepped towards the waif with an outstretched finger stating, and I'm telling you this, Karina but stopped as a rattling noise was heard at his feet. The group stopped and looked down to the ground where a large rattlesnake had come out of the brush and perched itself on the bard's shoe. Bulger and Sister Elaine began to advance, which only angered the snake, causing the rattle to increase and had it display its sharp fangs. Fargus heard the noise and ordered everyone not to move and began to pull his weapon, creeping up behind the unmoving bard, who was sweating from his brow. The ranger told Cabe to slowly lean back, but in doing so, the snake moved into an attack position. Flustered, Fargus pointed out that he couldn't get the thing without chopping off a toe or two, which garnered an expletive-filled response from the half-elf. For a few tense moments, no one moved, and Cabe held his breath, waiting for the painful, poisonous bite to come. A clicking noise caused the creature to swivel around from Cabe just as the baby axe beak waddled towards the serpent. Karina called out to the bird, but it was too late. The rattlesnake took aim and lunged forward at the helpless baby. To everyone's surprise, the axe beak smacked the rattlesnake with its black beak with one quick snap, cut its head off with its sharp protrusion. It quickly gobbled up the rest of the body, leaving only the severed head in the dust before waddling back between Karina's legs. Wordlessly, the group stood in amazement at the event that had unfolded before them, looking back at Cabe. 
Sweat beaming on his brow, he pointed back at Karina and spoke. Like I said, Peepers isn't going anywhere. He then turned around with his entire body rattled at the experience. Karina smiled and patted the creature's head before picking it up again. A few hours later, the group opted to make camp near a large rocky outcropping off the trail. Their new tent went up quickly and was indeed quite roomy. With the sun setting, the adventurers dined on some long-eared rabbits caught by Fargus. Cabe even gave a small bite to Peppers, who nearly snapped off a finger by accident. Grinning as the group looked on, Cabe pointed out that he will keep the feeding to Karina. With the mood lightened, the group laughed, but Lady Irena held up a hand for silence. Looking around, they realized they forgot to post a guard and heard voices outside the tent. Grabbing their weapons, they prepared to be invaded, but no one entered. Outside voices in the common tongue were laughing and bragging about robbing a caravan of pioneers. Several of the men suggested that they should have just killed the rubes instead of taking their stuff, but one gruff voice advised for all of them to shut up and he would make the decisions. Fargus slowly made his way to the tent entrance and was horrified to see that the men were within ten feet. Pondering why the men hadn't entered the tent, he gripped his weapon before signaling to the others. The ranger held up fingers indicating the bandits he saw and their locations as it pertained to the entrance. The numbers were evenly matched, but Sister Elaine leaned forward and in a hushed tone asked why the men hadn't entered the tent. Shrugs from everyone indicated that they had no idea. Fargus pulled Cabe to the entrance and motioned for him to exit and go left while he would exit and go right. The ranger then motioned for Sister Elaine, Karina, and Bolger to exit and go straight. Finally, he did the magic finger waving at Lady Irena, who was to be stationed at the entrance of the tent. Karina tossed the tunic over peepers and armed herself. The ranger held up one finger, then a second, followed by a third, before rushing out of the tent, followed by the rest of the group. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.